Another episode of Brides Around the World. You guys, I just feel like it just gets, I don't want to say it gets better and better, but it gets better and better. Like, I had to travel all the way to Cardiff for this, and it was epic. Now, if you haven't guessed it by the flag in the thumbnail, today's episode is about the Sudanese bride. I am so excited to be bringing you another episode of Brides Around the World. This is probably one of my most popular, if not the most popular um, series on my page. It does take a lot to do, but it is so incredibly rewarding. And each of these cultures that I visit and I transform into their brides, I learn so much about the culture. I literally feel like I teleport back home to the country and I'm surrounded by a village of incredible women and I'm getting dressed up. Like that's how I felt. It. So I hope you enjoyed this transformation guys. Keep watching for the full trans bridal transformation of a Sudanese bride and enjoy it.
was incredible fun. I got to meet with my homegirl Yusra, who's also from Toronto, and it was like, I'm not gonna lie, we were crying when we saw each other. It just it just brought a little bit of home back into my heart. It felt so great. Obviously, Yusra, who is a Sudanese designer who is absolutely incredible, has worked with massive brands, has her own boutique called Boutique Danana. She has been Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, she has been such a huge help on this transformation. Then we reached out to Mana, who is a makeup artist, and she's an East African makeup artist. She's incredibly talented. When I tell you this woman is booked up like months in advance, she's booked up months in advance, and the way she made this work, she just said, yes, I can make it the day before. She showed up on time, like had everything. She was so professional, so kind. I can't even hype her up enough. She felt like us like women getting together and just celebrating the culture and the people and the traditions. And yes, I just wanted to say my team was yet again incredible. Let's talk about the Sudanese bridal experience. Now this may be helpful to you if you are marrying someone that's Sudanese or if you're a Sudanese bride or if you just want to see your culture, this is it, all right? Okay, I did a little homework. My experience with transforming into a Sudanese bride was heart heartwarming, wholesome. The tradition was so rich and unique, and the clothing was quite different. The tradition was quite different, and it's just like, how do, how do I feel? I, honestly, it was an experience. Our first makeup look. So I got there, I was wearing my kaftan, Chani Jinko kaftan set, no makeup. Um, didn't sleep the night before um, where I'm from it took me approximately like four to five hours to get to Cardiff But once I got there the place was pretty much set up the studio was set up the girls The ladies literally like made it happen I don't know how because all of these women have careers outside of this and Yusra, Salwa, uh, Sajda and Asma they all got together and they decorated the studio. I'm gonna list all their details down below, give you a little glimpse of what that looked like. It was just tradition. It smelled like Bahur as soon as you walked in. It was, they really transformed the tiny corner of the studio. The first thing I did was we all sat down, we had something to drink, we sat down, and Mana started with my face. Now, I just wanna say, she was like the quickest makeup artist I've ever experienced. And she was really, really, really good. She knew her stuff. She was just amazing. She, Mana, I love you. Dealing with the Sudanese bride, it's very much like just chiseled, lots of highlight. A red lip is like really popular. And like a shimmery, goldy, like a lot of gold. That's what we focused on with the main, the first look. To kick off all the ceremonies, you have the agate. It's like the nikah ceremony. And it usually starts either weeks or months before all the other ceremonies, depending on the circumstance of the bride and groom or what they have planned. So we would call it our nikah ceremony. The traditional word for it is the agate. Now the henna party can take place before or after the nikah, just depending on um, the bride's family, as the bride's family throws this for the bride and the broom does not need to be present. So the bride can wear a tobe of her choice or she can wear whatever she wants for the henna party. In my transformation video, you'll notice a beautiful white and red abaya. This is designed by Boutique Danana and it's actually made by Tobe Al Surati, which is basically a material that is typically used in the Sudanese culture. To be precise, a material that is typically used for Sudanese weddings. Now, the grooms don't usually attend the bride's henna party. Their henna ceremony usually happens the day before. And yes, the grooms do wear henna, and it's considered a more prominent part of the wedding um, traditions and ceremonies. Something interesting is the bride's henna actually is applied the night before, and it's not actually applied during the henna party but that would actually save time and you could actually enjoy your henna party if you had your henna done beforehand it makes sense so moving on to the red theme ceremony this ther ceremony is so beautiful and rich basically you wear a jirtik which is a traditional sudanese red bridal outfit the one i wore was literally hand painted like and it had this beautiful red glitter and I, they used it to wrap me up. Oh, I felt like a queen. I felt like a queen, guys. Jirtik is uh, the red themed bridal ceremony. It's usually done subhiya, 
which literally means morning after. Some brides usually choose to do a bridal dance that consists of a few outfits of different colors, but the final one is usually the jirtik look. So the red look is usually worn with the gold headpiece called jedla, which is lots and lots of gold pieces and anklets and belts, armbands and bracelets. The bride is usually decked out in the gold from head to toe and the grooms wear outfits made of tob al surati. The tob al surati, I don't know if you recognize it, but it's the same material that I wore. The groom usually wears a male version of that for the red ceremony day. In the jirtik ceremony, the older women, older wiser women of the family usually perform this ceremony while everybody else chants this uh, chant called Adil Wazain. I'm not gonna lie, I've never been decked out in so much gold. And the red lipstick, the red, it's just honestly, it was gorgeous. The headpiece sort of looked like hair and it kind of goes down the shoulders, my shoulders and falls to the back. It was hard to move, I'm not gonna lie. But who wants to move at this point? You just wanna sit, sit there and look like perfection you know what I mean I was like I was in my element I'm not gonna lie so as everybody is chanting Adil Wazain during the Jirtik ceremony the older wiser women in the family are tying Harira which is a fuchsia silk thread with blue beads onto the bride they then place the darira, which is a conjunction of mehlib and sandalwood powder on their heads they then place candy in the other hands to symbolize happy days to come and wealth the groom then stands up and sprays all the single ladies with perfume and scatters candies and favors. Okay, so next is the milk spraying ceremony. This was extremely difficult for me. I don't know why it was so hard for me to... I couldn't like, I didn't know what I was doing. And I basically, I tried to get a clip of me spraying milk, but I was just shooting milk everywhere in the most unattractive way. I just really couldn't get it right. I went home and when I was in the shower, I tried it with, while the shower was on me. I was like, but it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. So the milk spraying ceremony is also vital in Jirtik where the groom and the bride take a sip of milk from a fancy glass and attempt to spray their partners whilst their families cheer them on. Milk is a symbol of purity, prosperity, and good days to come. So brides who don't usually do the bridal dance tend to do the jirtik after their white dress ceremony. The groom and the bride go off on their honeymoon. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this Sudanese bridal transformation. It was an absolute honor and privilege and pleasure to be a part of this culture and to show this to you. Thank you so much for the, being a part of the filming crew. I will list everybody down below in the description box if you want to get in touch with that. Guys, please don't bite my head off if I mispronounced anything. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna try my best, but I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe, follow, thumbs up this video, and make sure you hit the bell notification to get notified when I upload next. Also, comment down below and let me know what bride you'd like me to transform into. Mwah. Bye guys.